Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about a fantastic idea. The big game's right around the corner. You got the Eagles versus the Chiefs, and I thought, what better way to create a dish iconic for both parties, right? Kansas City is world-renowned for their barbecue. Philadelphia is world-renowned for their cheesesteaks. That's kind of hard to put on the griddle. But what if we do a cheesesteak-style pizza and a barbecue-style pizza, put them on a cast iron dishes, put them all on the Pit Boss smoker, and see which one comes out a winner. You guys stay tuned. All right, we have 500,000 ingredients today, so there will be no recipe. This is just make it and create it. I got some tick, uh, chicks, tips and tricks up my sleeve. Uh, show you guys this a little bit. So I got my uh, cast iron lodge pans. This is a uh, Griswold, this is a lodge. Uh, first things first, we're gonna get the dough prepped, get our cast iron prepped. We are heating up our pit boss. I'm gonna hover about um, 425-ish degrees, somewhere through there. Just make a fantastic, fantastic pizza battle. All right? Pizza battle. All right. This is supposed to be room temperature. It's 13 degrees outside. <laughs> that didn't last long. So I just like to take a little bit of butter. I love that buttery crust. Just wipe all inside down your cast iron, all around the edges. Just get it really good. I don't know if you can honestly have too much butter. That dough will absorb it. Oh, that's this, a, this is how you do all your cast iron pizzas. Yeah, I like it. I mean, if you like something, just stay with it. Now that you have it smeared with butter, I'm gonna take a little cornmeal. I've got a mix of cornmeal and polenta. One's finer, one's thicker. This is just your standard mix. We just love the crunch. Now this is optional, but I just absolutely love that little extra cornmeal kick on the bottom. And then these are the grits. Just uncooked, you're not using a lot. Just a light dusting. So we have polenta and buttermilk white cornmeal. All right, as you can see, we just got some pre-made dough. Um, the local grocery store has some fantastic dough that's just ready to go. Uh, just read the package instructions. This has been sitting out for about an hour. Here's a tip. Turn your oven on. As soon as you feel heat, just the slightest bit of heat, go ahead and turn it off and put your dough inside of it. It helps it rise. Look at that, that is fantastic. All right, once you get your bread out, your dough out, just go ahead and get the bubbles out a little bit. You don't have to overwork it. We're just gonna put it in our pan, use the finger method, just start stretching. All right. All right, when you're using this thicker dough, just get it worked out to the edges. We're gonna put our ingredients all the way out to the edges so you don't have to really worry about coming up the sides. I like to get it done a couple minutes when I start prepping my ingredients. That way it has a chance to proof back up a little bit. Indentions as always, just a quick pinch of salt. Come back in with a little olive oil, lightly. Okay, I'm gonna do the next one exactly the same way. In this sauce pot, I've got just a little bit of butter, some garlic, and some like Italian seasoning, um, kind of like a, a breadstick style. It's got Parmesan cheese, Italian seasoning, some red pepper, just to get those flavors going. That's also going to go on our pizza. So they're resting. You see that we're starting to proof back up a little bit. That's what I wanted. We got our beautiful cut ribeye. You can't have a cheesesteak, whether it's in Philly or across the country without a ribeye. Just love it. Uh, this has been in the freezer for quite a bit, maybe about 35, 45 minutes. It's actually pretty cold outside as well. So I'm gonna look for small uh, strips. I'm just gonna cut it in half and then come back in here and just cut as thin as possible. Whoo, got the cheesesteak cut up. We got some pepper, some onions. Yes, I know peppers don't go on a Philly cheesesteak, but to be honest with you, when you order a cheesesteak pizza, it comes on it, get over it. American cheese, white American cheese, that's my favorite. We got some provolone because those two combinations are deadly when it comes to cheesesteak. And I love some banana peppers. All right. Let me show you right quick because I want this to set up a little bit. I don't want it too soupy, too uh, 
too hot. See the consistency I'm looking for? It holds on to stuff. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. That's also going to go down to a pizza, especially the cheesesteak one. I want this all in the edges, all in the nooks and crannies, especially around them edges, okay? Just like that. You don't have to worry about cooking your vegetables all the way because you are going to put them on the smoker for about, or you can use it on the grill, oven, it don't matter, for about 15 minutes. So you don't want to overcook your vegetables. Just lightly season it with your favorite seasoning. I just got a little concoction I'm working on. I'm not going to overdo it. I want the flavors to pop, come through. Oh, that smells good. That smells good. Mm. Maybe just a touch of oil, not a lot. Probably use some of that. Say what? Why not, right? And that was the butter, garlic, and Italian. Just marrying thing. those flavors all together, yep. I'm oh, probably yeah. going to, what, what'd you say? It smells so good. I know it. When I know the it. steam like comes my way. Yep. All right. I'm not going to cook this all the way. You guys see how we still got some underdone pieces. Remember, it's going back in the oven. Smoker. That's the idea anyways. And it looks good. That right there. It's good on its own. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. All right. Fresh on the, uh, on the bottom here. This is kind of why I did not do a sauce on the bottom, like a white cheese sauce. I just thought adding that American cheese on the bottom with all that garlic, butter, and stuff like that would probably create its own sauce. As you notice, I'm kind of leaving a little bit on the edges. I love those little burnt edges. Look at all that juice. I get some Jordan, that pizza dough. Mm. Really didn't know how much vegetables to add. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I don't wanna go overboard. Although it looks like we got pretty close. Heck with it. Heck with it. It's a vegetable. We'll live. Oh my gosh. That looks good already. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a winner already, honey. Winner, winner, cheesesteak pizza dinner. As you can tell, this is a healthy option. I mean, it's, it's the big game Sunday. So, I mean... You're not really there for a healthy option. I'm gonna leave it just like that because I don't want to overdo it. I like it when it has a chance to breathe just like that. All right, we got that one set to the side. Now we're starting on that Oops. Kansas City style. What about banana peppers? Oh, I was so happy and how good it looked, I forgot. All right, perfect. Because I like banana peppers. I think it cuts to the fat. Really good, really good. All right, for a Kansas City style, here we go. We got some restaurant style pulled pork because I know that you guys in Kansas City are crazy about your barbecue. We don't have the luxury. We got that South barbecue, a little bit different. So basically what I did, I just went to the store that I thought was, uh, or the restaurant that was closest in my mind of what I had in Kansas City before. It comes with a big old thing of sauce. Fantastic. So let's get it warming up on the griddle just to get those fats blended out in it. Warm that up. All right, I've just got a little blend that I've been mixing up myself lately. Just add a little bit more flavor on that. So basically like a barbecue seasoning. Yep. Just let all that fat render out of that pork. Get that chill off of it. Good piece of bark right there. That's when you know you got a good barbecue joint down the road. All right, for the bottom, I'm gonna go about a half and a half of a pizza sauce. 
Maybe one more. We like our saucy. And then come back in with a little of that barbecue sauce. It's okay if it's cold, because it will heat up through the smoker. Edge to edge. Here I've got some pepper jack and some sharp cheddar, just freshly grated. This is not the packaged stuff. I'm gonna make sure I get all around the edges, just a very light coat. I'm gonna skip on a barbecue now. This is for the big game. This ain't no scrimmage. I gotta be ready. So when my Eagles win that game, I don't even have a dog in the fight. Go Eagles. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's down. We're going to sauce it with barbecue sauce. Come back over top of it. Just a touch more of that seasoning. All right, we have sliced mozzarella. If you don't believe me, that's the package. Same thing in the corners that we did the other one. I just love how it burns on the, on the edges. Just like that. Come back in a little bit more of that cheese. For basically just for color. Got some diced jalapenos. Boy, this is gonna be a deep dish. Deep dish pizza. And then come back in with just a little red onion. Obviously, all this is optional. This is how we're doing it. This is how we roll. All right, you guys ready? Right on top, right on top. All right, we're at the 15 minute check. I wanted to hit the 425 mark, but my smoker has 400 and 450, no 425, which is fine. So what I'm doing, basically I cooked it on low, like the 400 style, the first go around. Go ahead and just rotate them just to make sure that we're getting even cooking. I'm gonna move them closer to that hot spot right in the middle. Now's the time I'm gonna take it up to 450 and uh, finish these bad boys off. 30 minutes in, your pizza should look something like this. As you can imagine, I'm nervous as can be. They've been on there for 30 minutes. I'm assuming they would be done, but you never know. That's always that's something when you don't do it often. You know, you just don't have that confidence but I do have one confidence. That dang cheese around the side is absolutely dying. Oh, might look at that crust in there. Can you see that? Can you get in there? So I'm gonna try to let these cool down because we know nobody needs to eat hot pizza. Plus, I think I might actually help cook the dough a little bit more if it needs to. All right, remember how I talked about getting that cheese around the edges? I just took like a little, it's not a knife, it's a spatula, little uh, decor cake decorating thing with jigger. Just go around really good. Both pizzas, you want this to come out flawlessly. No hiccups. If you want to, try to lift a little bit just to make sure everything's going to come out. This is my uh, cast iron skillet that everybody gave me crap about because I used soap to clean it. And I said, oh, you're stripping away the seasoning. Everything's going to stick. Take that garlic butter, because they didn't have enough the first time. Right there. I got a lot of cleaning to do on that cast iron. 
All right, you ready for the cut? <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? No, it'll take a little bit. I'll have to use some salt. I don't use soap all the time. I'm not saying that. I was just saying that basically you can use it. It's not going to kill your cast iron. You just have to know how to maintain it after you do it. That's another show. All right. I'm ready to cut in. You ready to cut in? Have we let it cool long enough? <laughs> Nobody ever lets their pizza cool long enough. I mean, look how good it looks. Would you look at that? This little cold uh, barbecue sauce is going to cool down that pizza. <laughs> Can you hear that? Uh, yep. Oh. <laughs> Here's a trick. I, I try to teach you guys something all the time. With your meat, with your vegetables, with your fruit, even with pizza. If you're making homemade pizza, only cut what you're gonna eat, leave the rest of it whole. The more whole pizza together, the more like the moisture stains in, it's easier to warm up later. Uh, you don't lose a lot of the ingredients. Just a little tit for tat. Boy, that is a deep dish pizza, honey. All right. in your mouth mm -mm. it's fantastic best thing ever touchdown go team <laughs> goal basket <laughs> hole in one that's about all the sports things i know that first bite i was really worried about not making a sauce versus just doing the cheese on the bottom but i really thought if i hammered the garlic butter on the bottom that the cheese would have a chance to melt incorporate with the bread added that olive oil a little bit of salt i mean just look at that crust look at that okay let's see a picture of that one i don't know how to say this eloquently to my audience that's effing fantastic <laughs> i'm just saying it that might be some of the best food I've put out in quite a while. Some of the stuff I know I can make better on the next try. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Hurry up. Eat the other bite, too. <laughs> I'm going to eat this inside. Golly, that's perfectly balanced in flavor. God, that is... Mm. Okay. Hey, yeah. let's do this. While you're trying that bite, let me talk to the audience real quick. Hold it one hand. Yeah. We're getting close. Reaching up to like 75,000 people i really don't talk about it very few people today even mentioned about it because it's not what i'm doing it for but we are cre creeping up on 100 if you've uh subscribed to the channel thank you like really thank you from the bottom of our hearts it's uh, kind of changed the trajectory of our lives we really enjoy doing it we didn't know that it was going to be received so well do not be afraid to comment below good or bad i argue i cry laugh <laughs> you name it but if you're a subscriber, do not hesitate to comment below. Whether, oh, we got more Geographic Explorer going on. Whatever it is, I'm here. We can answer questions about food, talk about griddles, talk about whatever you want to. Got a bad day, reach out. I'm a veteran. Uh, there's a lot of things going on that you know we can always help each other with. So if that's something that piques your interest, drop a line below. Let's get to know each other. You guys can see that answer as many comments as I can. Are you done eating? Yeah. All right. Uh, I think... I think I gotta give it to the Philly. I do too. I do too. <laughs> it is so good. I wish somebody said, "Oh, you don't have peppers." Who cares? God, it's so good. It's creamy. It's cheesy. It's not overboard. The cheese is starting to hard up, harden up as the pizza gets colder. And that bite right there. Listen. Mm. The cornmeal. Yep. That's a little secret. The pellet smoker. People knock them all the time. I used to knock them all the time as well until I got one. It has changed my life. Mm, there you go, guys. Let the best team win. We both picked Philadelphia. <laughs> Based purely on pizza.
Uh, we have a membership uh, button down below. It's a join program. Check that out if you have. Thank you very much. Check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook, where we talk about griddles, talk about fellow smokers. I don't care. Let's talk about food. Let's talk about something that needs to get off your chest. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. That's three videos, one day, one take each. That is fantastic. I'm getting better. <laughs> Peace. I mean, which one would you have? Uh, the cheesesteak all the way. That one's good, too, though. I know. They're both, both good. Mm.